Okay, today we are going to run around in the Amy Systems chair a bit. So we're leaving the F3 behind here in the bus. The way this bridge plate is set up, it's a little bit challenging to get any other chair other than a front wheel drive in and out, but we're gonna be fixing that soon. I think the plan is going to be to actually remove that bridge plate and put in a little piece of extension metal to bridge that gap. I don't think it's really needed. You just have to be careful not to get your feet caught under here when you're lifting it up. But anyways, um, we've got to go to the mail center, pick up some stuff. So I think we're going to get on the road. I'm gonna try and drive this thing from the green van. Let's see how this goes. We have arrived at a random parking lot. I've parked a little ways away from the mail center because I wanna use this chair as much as possible in a few different scenarios. So we're gonna cut down this trail through some neighborhoods and it's probably maybe a mile or just a little bit over to where we're picking up the mail. So anyways, we're gonna put some miles on this Amy Systems chair. There will be a complete review video coming of this thing at some point, but I just want to get a number of miles on it, use it in a bunch of different situations and you know, figure out what I, what I like about it and what could be improved and all that stuff. I've got, um, I think I've put about 22 miles on this thing already since getting it. But anyways, I'm gonna get packed up and let's go get some mail. I, uh, I got a new hat, actually two of them. Well, they're not new. You'll just have to wait and see. I'm, I'm super excited. Let's go ahead and reset our trip meter here. By the way, if you have a CJSM2 and you don't see the menu icon, it's the top left button. Just press and hold it and it'll go into the user menu. Then you can get into like distance and stuff like that. Yeah, we got 22 miles on this thing. So let's reset our trip distance. And there we go. Basically just head down this trail a little ways. There's a bridge that'll get us over the highway. And then from there, there's a choice. We can cut through a neighborhood or kind of go down the sidewalk on a main road. It's getting towards rush hour though, so I'm thinking going down the main road might be safer because it's usually pretty backed up. If you go through the neighborhoods, then there's a bunch of cars trying to avoid the traffic and they're not paying attention to running stop signs. Plus, historically, this neighborhood we're going through is near where I used to live and there's no curb cutouts and the sidewalks are really bad. Like, they're sort of improving it, but yeah. So we'll probably just go down the main road. Now this chair does about 6.5 miles an hour with the motors that it has on it. So pretty much like standard power chair speed. They do have an increased, uh, I don't know if it's available on this chair, but they do have high speed motors available. But since this chair is sort of an off-road configuration, it's better to have lower speed, well, lower speed and more torque. But that's one of the things that we're going to be installing is an off-road kit on this thing. They make a kit that extends out the rear caster arms and makes the rear casters a lot bigger. And that's why this thing has the giant tires on it. So that'll be fun to play around with. I wanna use this thing for a few weeks or a month though, before we do that, just so I can get a good idea of how it's different with that on there. I will tell you though, I am a lot more comfortable running on these trails with a really fast chair, like the Bounder for example. I wanna be able to at least go jogging speed so that you know you can get away from drunken zombies and stuff, but it's not too bad around here really. You just gotta be, uh, gotta be head on a swivel and don't do anything dumb. That's weird. There's no traffic at all. Well, at least the crosswalk shouldn't be too bad. Really?
guy looked right at me too. I don't know if it's like this around the rest of the country, but I think around here, everyone's kind of gotten used to the, uh, the worldwide weirdness and how the police never do any traffic stops or haven't been for the last like two and a half years. They've recently started doing it again, but yeah, everyone just kind of drives like there's no rules or anything. I mean, I guess there's something to be said for the <laughs> philosophy you now. I guess there's something to be said for the inability of anyone to be shamed these days. It's the whole, you're not the boss of me concept. So, you know, why should I stop at a stop sign? Why should I look at crosswalks? You know, all that stuff. There's my rant for the day. At least the chair is a nice smooth ride. <laughs> okay, this is another intersection of doom. Let's see here, nobody coming that way. Kind of peek out over here. Not really sure what's going on here, but I'm gonna go over this way. Okay, our mailbox place is up here on the right. We do have a crosswalk here, but I think I'm gonna go down. Yeah, I'm trying to decide. Yeah, screw it, we'll use it. I was pondering going down to the next traffic light, but whatever. Oh, it's actually pretty quick. Yep, gotta watch out for that one. Head's always on a swivel. We're gonna post up over here real quick and open this box because what's inside of it is a lot smaller. And trying to carry this. Well, yeah, we'll just open it. Okay, are you ready for the supplies? Ta-da! It's two new old-style David's chair hats in pink and blue. <laughs> Excellent. And there's convenient dumpsters right here. I think on this route, we're gonna go ahead and go back through the neighborhood. Probably gonna have to bail from this sidewalk here pretty shortly, but if there is a school or something down here, I think we can cut through. Which should save about six blocks or so, maybe. Uh-oh, I gambled on the sidewalk. And there is no way off of this thing. Um, I guess Amy Systems curb drop test. Oh yeah, no problem. That was not a typical height curb, though. It was a little bit shorter than normal. Probably still a good four, four and a half inches, something like that, though. All right, take two on the crunchy crosswalk. The problem here is I'm sitting in the shade, so I think it's hard for people to see me, but breaking traffic, that'll do. It is kind of funny though, I find myself slowing down for bumps that this chair can handle just fine. I'm just used to every other chair. Ooh, it smells like gasoline. I'm just used to every other chair and how they handle things. Google Maps has this new like wheelchair accessible routes thing now. Has anyone tried that? I tried using it the other day. We were on the same trail and it wanted me to take this route right here. It's just, 
I, I like I get that they're trying to make things more accessible, but when you outsource it to random people that don't use chairs, how accurate is the information is going to be? You know, I see a lot of stuff. It's like, oh, there's only one step to get in, and they mark it as wheelchair accessible. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, we're almost back to the van. Got my stuff. Yeah. Range test on the remote starter. Let's see if it works from here. I know the camera is not going to be able to see it, but I can see the tail light from here. So let's hit the button. Oh, yep. I see him blinking. And it fired up. Sweet. Okay, impromptu. Whoops. Impromptu mail time. Uh, first off. Casey, I don't know if you're watching, but thank you for finding and sending me the old school David's Chair hats. Unfortunately, Otto, the manufacturer of these hats, has stopped making these blanks that are fabric all the way around, flat bill with the floral print. They only have sort of like a, uh, a trucker hat now that's sort of like a mesh or something. I don't know, I'm just not as big of a fan. Oh yeah, old school. And then, we have something from the Amazon wish list. It's ink for the meme printer. That is from, ah, Sean, thank you, sir. Okay, so let's, oh, wait a second. There's one more thing that got sent in that I almost forgot about. And that would be these here cans of cold brewed coffee. Now, I actually have no, I have no idea who sent these, these ones right here because the box showed up at the mail center and it had been cut open. Like the label was actually cut on it and it had been retaped. So if there were any like gift notes or anything in there, they're gone. So thank you whoever sent the coffee. I've been consuming it and it seems fairly decent. Now let's rewind a little bit. The trip back to the bus was a little bit more eventful than I was planning on it being. So yeah, here's this. Good, this uh, window mechanism just broke and now the window has descended. I don't think the glass broke. It didn't fall down with that much force, but as I recall, we replaced this mechanism on a live stream. Wait, we did it on a live stream and in a video. I think the second time it happened, maybe the cable just slipped off. Well, anyways, we're gonna take this thing apart now. Good times. Okay, this guy just merged into the side of me. There's his license plate. Hey, where's your insurance? I want to see it. You're the one that hit me. You were merging into you a lane. Hit me on your, you can see where the You are supposed to yield. You were in a lane I that merges. I ran out of lane, buddy. I ran out of lane because nobody was letting me in. That's because you tried to pass everyone. You slow down and you get in behind. It doesn't matter. That's have. not how the traffic laws work. Not my problem. You could have just stayed in line like everyone else instead of trying to pass everyone. That's what two lanes are for. Not my problem, dude. It's not mine either. Your insurance is all that's needed here. No. Not at all. All right, thanks. What are they doing? Are they coming? Yeah, you can wait in your truck. They'll be here shortly. Mm. What did they say? They'll be here shortly. Yeah, but that's what they were for. Yep. Ah, uh, people. So the short version is we're cruising down this two lane highway, one in each direction. There's this small section near an intersection where there's a second lane that allows people to pull into it and turn onto the side road and then pull off of that side road and merge onto the main highway or the main traffic lanes. Well, this guy was in line behind everyone and it's probably 30, 25, 30 mile an hour traffic. It backs up for miles and miles. So he pulls out, he's behind me, like probably three or four cars back, he pulls out races around everyone in that lane that's intended for turning, but he just goes straight and then tries to merge back in. Well, I'm bumper to bumper with the people in front of me and we're going like, you know, 25, well, at that point, probably not even 10 miles an hour. And he's like trying to squeeze his way back in and he just slams into the side of me. And he's like, oh, you're supposed to yield, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, buddy, that's not how it works. You could have just stayed in line like everyone else. So anyways. Uh, all right, let's see what the damage is. I'm sure it's not much. Uh, uh, so, 
Got some of his tire there. Got some fender action. A little bit there. Uh, tiny bit on the mirror. I don't see anything on this door. Hmm. So it looks like just the front. It's probably like a fender, a fender flare, some paint, maybe a hubcap. Um, yeah, so whatever. It's, I don't even think it's enough to even have to file a crash report. But dude gets out and he's refusing to give my, re refusing to give me his info, claiming that I have to give him mine and that's it. So I'm like, okay. Of course the wind, the driver's window in the van had just broken or the, the mechanism and I couldn't roll the freaking window up. The guy wasn't too crazy. He was just upset, obviously, but he wasn't like violent or anything like that. But regardless, I couldn't see if the how bad the damage was on the side of my van. I didn't want to try and open my doors and get out. So I just called the radio room and had one of the sheriffs come out and facilitate the transfer of information. And they're super happy to do stuff like that. <laughs> At one point, he started to say, oh, I didn't realize you were in a wheelchair. And <laughs> I wasn't even going to go there. <laughs> But anyways, um, sheriff came out, we transferred info. He refused to say anything about liability or anything whatsoever, which if I was him, I'd probably do the same thing. You know, he's like, I'm just here to facilitate the transfer of info. So now we get to gamble with insurance companies. Um, the law is very clear and he basically admitted that he was trying to pass everyone. So I don't know, we'll see what the insurance does good times oh I guess I have to go outside now and see if I can that window mechanism I think last time a cable just slipped off I was being super intentional not to push the power window button but my reflex is I hit the button a couple of times so hopefully I didn't screw up the cable in there but let's, let's go take a look at it and again the 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 damage is super minor I mean I think the fender flares are fiberglass and part of the running board. So yeah, they obviously are. I mean, honestly, I don't even see anything that's like broken. Yeah, it's just, hell, this would probably almost completely buff out. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of paint that came completely off there. Then this highly reflective bumper, there's some scratches right there in the chrome. There's that. And to be honest, like, this is all nitpicky stuff to me. But the guy was being a dillweed or whatever. <laughs> and um, he needs to pay for this, you know? If I was buying a van and it had stuff like this on it, I wouldn't even, like, blink an eye. Like, I don't know. I'm going to leave it on here for now. I'm pretty sure most of this will just buff out. Yeah, there's just... Only a couple spots where the paint is actually completely gone to the metal. Okay, this is gonna be super quick. I'm just gonna rip this panel off and uh, I'm trying to get my chair moved in here. There we go. I'm just gonna rip this panel off real quick, see what's going on and leave it, leave it at that. I feel like I've had this thing off of here a billion times already. Okay glass is not broken, so that's a bonus. Uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah, our cable came off of something. Okay, we've got a few layers of zip ties right there that are attached to the mechanism, so that shouldn't go anywhere. We're just gonna leave this for now. But our window is in fact closed. It's supposed to rain like a tiny bit tomorrow morning or something like that. So anyways, this camera has this weird cinematic mode that I didn't realize existed. I guess it blurs out the background. Anyways, this is not on, eh, kind of like having this hat again. By the way, it's not a Proud Boys hat. It, the, uh, weird comments. Anyways, this is not a priority to fix right now. And the blue van is actually going into the shop. Let's see, this is Monday. So it's going in Wednesday morning to get the brakes done. Turns out they thought that this thing had drum brakes on the back, which it does not. And that 
Well, they cost significantly more to get drums on these vans for some reason. So it should be a little bit cheaper. But regardless, we'll have that thing back online. And then this, this thing can go back into hibernation. I've decided I am going to be selling this thing. I'm just, I'm done screwing around with it. Uh, yeah, anyways. So while I've got you here with this weird blurry cinematic mode, let's get on to the rest of the video. I got a new microwave. And you may wonder why this necessitates being in a video, but I shall explain. Let's explore the world of the Panasonic inverter microwave. Well, I found a new toy at Goodwill. Well, <laughs> toy. This is a small Panasonic inverter microwave. Uh, I think it's just small enough to fit in the spot in the bus where I have the other one. And we should be able to mount it down in the same way. But the cool thing about inverter microwaves is, well, one, they weigh a lot less, but two, they don't have a big honking wound transformer in them. They use sort of like a DC or AC inverter drive to actually modulate the magnetron. Panasonic, I believe, is the only company that has the te technology to do that. And it's the only advancement that's ever happened to microwaves since they were invented. Anyways, this thing, assuming it works, it was from uh, Good Freaking Will, so you never know. I, I plugged it in and turned on, but since it's inverter drive, it doesn't have the, the normal thump and then buzz when it starts up. But this is gonna be a lot easier on my battery electrical system in the bus because it's not just firing up a giant transformer all at once and, you know, giant loads and whatever. So anyways, we'll take it inside and see if it actually heats. Needs a little bit of cleaning, but uh, it has dials and buttons and knobs, retractable knobs. Um, anyways, figure that's a great price for this thing. Let's stick it inside and see if it heats stuff up. And the other cool thing with these is, well, like I said, you can actually modulate the output power on it. The way traditional microwaves work is that transformer just fires up at max power and then it pulses on and off on sort of a schedule depending on the power level you set. But this thing, since there's inverter drive, it can actually run it lower or higher or whatever. Um, can use a little bit of cleaning, not too bad. But uh, let's grab a cord and plug this thing in. Uh, uh, it's got one of these single insulated cords that I can't stand. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit, a little bit too short though. We've relocated to the floor back here. Let's plug this thing in. Oh, I don't want to unplug that clock. I'll have to reprogram it. Eh, whatever. It's for the microwave. Okay, we have lights. Ooh, there's an LED light in there. Let's uh, see if it can heat something up. I just want to see if it gets very, very slightly warm or not. Uh... Whoa, stop. Okay, so I don't know how much power that's pulling, but that instantly threw the inverter into low power or low battery mode. Um, hmm, how much power does this thing pull? Oh, you know what? It has been, let's see what our inverter battery voltage is. It's been fairly cloudy most of the day. Oh yeah, our batteries are only currently at 23 volts. <sighs> the sun just came out a little bit ago and it is now six o'clock almost. So yeah, our batteries are a little bit low. Um, well, apparently it works. Um, I guess before we get too carried away, we should make sure it's going to fit in our allotted space. So, say 11 inches by, eh. Nineteen. Out of the way, you. Okay, width-wise, no problem there. Height-wise, oh yeah, no problem. Sweet. By the way, whoop, there, yeah. By the way, Stanley Leverlock. Uh, you should get one of these. Best thing ever. Also. You should throw away whatever microwave you have and get an inverter one by Panasonic. They're friggin' awesome. Just for comparison's sake, let's turn this thing on and see what our inverter batteries do. Yep, 
can hear him beeping. So that means it's time to hook up the generator and we're going to have to use that to get the batteries. Actually, I think we're gonna do, we're gonna use the generator to run the AC and then we can charge the inverter batteries from the grid. I don't know, something like that. We gotta open this hatch and I've got a uh, pigtail in here to hook the generator up to. And this giant, what used to be um, neon green cord is the one we want. This is for something else. So we're going to probably have to use this a few more times in the coming weeks or so. So we're gonna pass this through to the outside. That way I don't have to open this hatch and screw with that every time we need to hook up the generator on a slightly cloudy day that requires air conditioning. Because the problem is the air conditioner, when it's on, uses the entire grid feed. So that means everything else in here has to be run off of solar for the day, which if it's sunny will work fine, but yeah, again, repeating myself. And I just got grease on my jeans. I'm gonna have to wash them. Lucky for us, seeing as how the blue van is still offline, it's currently being used as a storage unit, which means it's significantly easier to get the generator out of here because there's a ramp instead of a lift. Door needs a little bit of help. Yeah, I should probably fix the latch on this at some point. For right now, this gets the job done. And seeing as how we're gonna be running a pretty hefty load, we're gonna unroll this all the way because leaving a coil of wire in here when you've got great big loads will result in, well, a giant coil when everything gets hot and starts melting. Wait a minute. I have been looking for this. This fell out of the hose no Oop. This fell out of the hose nozzle about a week ago. Sweet. All right, much better. Do, 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 dragging around cords. Now we can go back inside and select which loads we want to offload to the generator. There we go. And this cord comes right up through here in the floor from the generator. We've got a light on it so we know it's working. So let's do the inverter batteries. Oh wait, no, I lied. We're gonna leave those hooked up. Let's uh, let's hook the AC up to the generator. For that to turn off. It's got a bit of a cool down cycle. Yeah, might be time to clean that filter. Yeah, I should probably do that. Okay, that's off. Turn this off, unplug that. Okay, that's connected to the generator so we can turn this back on. And let's go to home assistant. Okay, and then here we are currently pulling 82 watts from the grid. So let's turn the grid back on. So that's connected. Inverter grid on. Thank you. And we'll turn on our Victron charger. And then we should see this number go up to close to a thousand watts. So we're running everything in here and charging the inverter batteries. As illustrated by this number, which should start slowly going up. There we go. And we should still be getting maybe 100 watts from solar, even though it's fairly late in the day. So let's uh, get this thing fired back up. It's probably got a timeout cycle, so it won't turn on for another five minutes or something. It appears to be the next day. The new microwave is just kind of sitting up here. It looks significantly larger than the old one, but like, According to measurements, I don't know. But look, 
I just accidentally realized everything in here is like stainless now. So that's a thing. Um, I've got some feet being delivered. As you can see, there's the lid for one of these underneath there. Um, Goodwill production is pretty hard on things. So anyways, there should be some new feet here, but okay, I guess it does have quite a bit of interior space, but this thing seems to work nice. And look, it has knobs. Uh, I've got some chicken in here right now. Um, yeah. Oh, and got a new thermometer. This thing's kind of cool. Look how fast it updates. Ooh, look at it fly. Uh, according to this here thing, our chicken is very much done. Maybe a little too done. Just use some olive oil, salt, and pepper. Um, it's weird how fast it cooks. There's like, well, I guess it was like 20 minutes. Anyways, I'm gonna let this sit here for a few minutes and then, um, yeah, food and stuff. All right, second batch of chickens going in there. Yeah, I was trying slightly different this time. I wanted to go with like ridiculously moist chicken. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the lighting in here is pretty bad. But yeah, it's actually um, really good. Just olive oil, salt, and pepper. The, um, the next ones I wound up using some of this Greek stuff on. I always use this for everything, but I wanted to try it without. So these ones, go back in there. What's going on? Oh, there's a wayward salt canister. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just cooking up all this right now and then I'll have lunch or whatever for a couple days. Yeah, good stuff. Apparently there's bugs flying around. All right, here's the old microwave, but for the new one, we have some rubber feet that we can hopefully stick on there. And you've got a few different sizes. Now these are a little bit smaller than they looked on the listing. Uh, I think these are probably going to be closest. Yeah, I think these will probably work the best. Yeah, just so I could use this thing last night. Um, you can see there's one foot there and one there is missing. So I just stuck that under there because it was tilted at enough of an angle that the, um, the glass rotating plate inside there was getting all all confused. I think, yeah, that should stay put. So I think those little dome ones should work fine on here. So we'll just uh, pull this out of here. Goodwill production is pretty rough on things. So usually the feet get knocked off of stuff. And as far as mounting things, um, just use brackets like this, drive a screw in there. I did take the cover off of this and look around inside and make sure, I think I'm gonna use, well, I've got, there's two mounting plates already on the back that we're going to use, and then I'll figure out a couple on the side as well. And here for the toaster oven, for example, that's just to hold the crumb tray in place. But yeah, let me, uh, let me get these stuck on here, and uh, I think we should be good to mount this thing down. Eh, kind of a mess in here. I do have the Amy Systems chair in here, but I've been working on cleaning up some stuff. By the way, super random, uh, what do you call it? Well, super random. I've been trying to find a pillbox that's not stupid. This one's supposedly made out of metal. Ooh, fancy. And I think you squeeze, yeah, you squeeze this and then throw it on the floor. How did both halves of it end up back there? Okay, as we now know, there's no lock, so this thing just slides all the way out. But this is plastic, it's got room for some things, little uh, spring-loaded latches, and it slides down inside this thing, which one-handed operation here. 
So yeah, so that's kind of cool. It seems like all you uh, normally can get your hands on are those ones with the plastic lids and hinges and stuff. But yeah, this seems to be kind of neat. These are, well, Amazon pricing is weird, but this was $10 on Amazon. I'm sure the pricing will change as soon as I post a link. But I will put an Amazon associate link down below for that. Doesn't cost you any extra, but I make a small percentage on the transaction. That's AOV on something? Wait, what does this smell like? <laughs> Doesn't smell like dangerous chemicals, so that's good. All right, cool. We have a thing. I like it. We're ready for grandma's kitchen closet and uh, lawn care tool shed band. Diagonal cutters are not only for cutting, they make a really good sort of like gripping and prying tool without actually cutting sometimes. Yeah, there we go. I could probably find some of these, but they look wildly specific. So this will get the job done, I think. Okay, um, this thing is now mounted in place. We've got two brackets on the back, one on each side. And I pulled the cover off to check and make sure I could drive these tech screws in without affecting anything. But uh, yeah, I think we have a microwave now. I put some of those little dingly feet under the bottom here. They don't, they don't stick super well, but now that the thing is like bolted down, I think it should be fine. Uh, yeah. Ta da! Microwave, and convection oven, and fridge. Okay. I'm tired now. It was a lot of work. Keep saying more light is required. There we go. All right. I think we're going to call that a video. Um, always something going on. I'm not too worried about the stuff at the van. I'm going to go get an estimate done and. You know, luckily the laws in Oregon are such that, well, I'm going to hold that thought until the claim is actually done. Lest the insurance company find out I'm on the internet. That's happened before and really screwed things up for me. Not with traffic accidents, but with other stuff. Oh my gosh, he's on YouTube. That's not allowed. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next video. I don't know if there's going to be another one this week. Maybe. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background. Regardless, though, I'll see you Thursday on the live stream, if not sooner. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, the new settings on my breathing machine are awesome. I'm feeling a lot better than I was. Quiet, fly zapper. But I'm feeling a lot better than I was, so that's great. And I'm just noticing now that this thing wants a new battery.